Only problem, I bought it from a fake seller. James Danner just walked over to my desk. If you skip the first three steps, that's the easiest way to lose money. Hey guys, it's James with Heat Nader Real Estate and we are teaming up with Bigger Pockets. We're gonna take you through our new mid-century modern purchase and take you through the steps on how to restore this modern home. All right guys, so we just finished the trash out on our new mid-century modern purchase. Uh, to give you a quick background, if you are not familiar with mid-century modern, it's an architectural style that was done in the, uh, the mid-1900s. It is slowly transitioned from an architectural style into a piece of art. So when re restoring and renovating these properties, if you do it right, you can maximize your profit by getting optimal pricing. People will pay a premium for product like this if done correctly. So to give you a quick background on the house, we paid $1.2 million for this property. We bought it from a wholesaler and actually paid him $150,000 fee. We're anticipating to put $200,000 into the renovation uh, and restoration, and we're targeting an exit price of 1.65 to 1.7 million. All right guys, so we're gonna dive right in in what we're gonna renovate and what we're gonna restore. Again, remember in these mid-century homes that it is a timeless architecture. It is not a design trend. So look for the things that you can keep or that you can never replace. A great example is this fireplace inside this property. It's got the mid-century stacked brick. Uh, typically, it's already been painted. You don't usually want to paint these. If you can keep the original texture, keep it. Don't ruin the era. But because this is already painted, we're going to resurface this. We're going to paint this out two-tone. It's got its rectangular or triangle-shaped design. That's a mid-century style uh, fireplace. And we're going to keep the geometric shape it ties in with the era. That's, that's, it's kind of the definition of mid-century modern. So we're going to play into this. And then other things like the old slated tile. We're not going to rip things like this out. In our typical renovation, we demo this out, put in the modern design trailer, we might have thrown some penny tile, but we're not doing it in this home. You want to keep the original uh, design and architecture. As we transition from the fireplace, which we're going to restore and keep the original character, there are things to the footprint that we need to modernize to maximize the value. So things like this in the kitchen wall. We're not gonna rip out the whole kitchen and redesign the whole thing, but we are gonna improve it to kind of current building standards. So we're gonna open up this whole kitchen wall, have a giant island. The design that we're gonna put in this kitchen is gonna be very mid-century with wood grains and flat panel. That's the style of a mid-century home. We're gonna be mixing in walnut flat panel ca cabinets in the upper or lowers, and we're gonna do a white flat panel on the uppers. At the same time, we're gonna open it up with a five-foot island to modernize the footprint so people will pay us that optimal pricing but get that original design. So moving on, let's check out the rest of the house. So as we transition, mid-century homes oftentimes have a little bit of a funky layout. That's what they're known for. So upstairs, it's gonna be a very simple arrangement. We're gonna have two bedrooms and a one bath upstairs. So as we're demoing the property, we're having it done in a very systematic way. Note that in your budget, that can cost a little bit more. If your demo guys can't just tear out and pull out, they might charge you a little bit more, but it's worth it. You're gonna get paid back on that. So things like these built-ins, we're gonna resurface them, repaint them all out. We're gonna swap out all the hardware from mid-century hardware. Again, take your time, pick the right specs, the right knobs will actually tie this in well. But don't over-demo your mid-century home or any kind of architectural design home. In the bathroom, things that we're doing to kind of keep this thing in line and keep our budget in line. So we're updating all the plumbing. It's got old galvanized plumbing. We're going to PEX. We're putting in a new tub. We're doing all new valves with tile surrounds. The tile that we're gonna be picking for this property is gonna be either like a penny tile, which matches the era, and then we're gonna do a stacked subway tile, like a four by four or a four by six. How we lay that tile is very, very important that we tie into the whole era of the house. You want to do straight lines, no, no brick lay in a mid-century modern. Other things that we're doing to keep the character, we're keeping the built-in soffits. This is very hard to replace and put back together in the right way if the original charm. So we're making sure that they keep these little things because we can modernize and update the whole home but keep all the flavor in the home. So as we go through, we got a simple two bedroom, one bath property. Pretty straightforward. We're keeping the exact same window schedule and design. Windows are a big deal in a mid-century home. 
oftentimes they actually make or break how the house actually feels. So when you're ordering your windows, order uh, retrofit them and order to the exact size. You don't want to shrink and expand and take out the actual original design of the home. So as I noted earlier, mid-century modern homes can have quirky floor plans and that's okay. That's part of the style of the home. So actually as we transition to the basement, we actually have two sets of basements. We go into one landing, which we're turning in from a large office in a, a bonus room and a bathroom into a giant master suite that's gonna be over 700 square feet. We're putting in a five piece bath, walk-in closet, and it's gonna have its own indoor outdoor access to its own private patio. The finishes that we'll be doing in our five piece bathroom are gonna be of mid-century design. The tile is gonna be a terrazzo or a geometrical shaped tile floor. If you're looking to save on a budget, go with sheet vinyl, no grids. That will give it that same mid-century look. And again, we're gonna go with neutral, subtle tile for all the backsplashes. Stack them on grid, keep it mid-century, clean lines, no bricklets. So as we transition to the lowest level, right now we have a three bedroom, two bath floor plan, which is okay for a mid-century style, but that's not gonna get them top dollar on pricing. We need to make this a family friendly house. So what we're gonna be doing in the basement is we're reframing and redesigning the whole thing. Uh, in this section through here, we've designed actually our mechanical closet. The reason we've made it in our mechanical is because our systems are already in this location. A great way to save money on your layouts is keep your mechanicals in the right location. So by doing this, we're, we just saved $8,000 in ducting and we don't have to replace our hot water tank. So there's almost $10,000 in saving by keeping it here. As we transition through here, we need to get another bedroom and bathroom to maximize the comp value. So in this section here, we have outdoor access, which goes out to the side yard. So through here, we're gonna open up with a lot more natural light. We're gonna install two new windows to give more light through. The more light, the better dollars you're gonna get for your property. And we're also gonna cut in another egress window in here and a full light door. So through this section of the, the basement, we're gonna have a wide open bonus space, a laundry section in here, and then we're gonna frame in a bedroom and a bathroom in here. So our finished product is gonna be a four bedroom, three bath, modernized mid-century home with the right specs and design, which is always gonna sell for top dollar. All right, now that we finished our interior walkthrough, let's go take a look at the outside. So things that we're doing, on the home to keep the, the mid-century feel is we're actually gonna replace these doors with the exact same doors. We're not going with those custom modern wood glass doors. We wanna keep the blanks because that's the style of the home. We're also keeping this original window schedule and just repairing the glass rather than replacing so we don't get an extra reveal in there. Then we're gonna retrim out all the windows so it looks brand new, but it's a still original form. Other things we're doing for the windows, we are modernizing the non-big bay windows with black, uh, thin revealed windows. This costs more by doing it this way because we have to order them as a special order and retrofit them right in rather than just ordering a window and making it fit to size. This is really important you do this on the right mid-century home so you don't mess up your curb appeal. If you add a piece of two inch or three inch trim on this, it's gonna take the flavor out of the house. So in mid-century homes, courtyards and private spaces can tie the whole theme together. So luckily we're working with a great footprint and we're gonna come through our main entry gate. We're gonna have a new gate rebuilt out by a custom metal guy. We wanna play into the era. We Again, we don't wanna go with generic. Generic ruins the mid-century vibe. We're gonna acid wash all this patio out. We're gonna stack in new plants through here. And then we have a massive amount to do, of work to do in the back. So as we transition to the back, we have a lot of work to do here. So the home was originally built with an oversized 20 by 30 deck with cool built-in bench seating that matches the era of the home. So what we've done is we've demoed out the whole structure that was rotted out and we're replacing it with the exact same structure so it ties in with the original era. Also what we're doing from here is our lot transitions through the back and we have a carport. Carports are the traditional parking of a mid-century home. Oftentimes they don't have garages. So what we're gonna do is keep the original design that the architect had created and we're gonna add in some additional screening uh, mid-century screening that are gonna be tight one by one cedar screens which are an often theme of a mid-century home. It's gonna give privacy to the carport and tie in with the style. So thanks for checking out our video today on Bigger Pockets. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button if you wanna see more videos from myself and other very intelligent real estate investors. Also, make sure to check me out on Instagram, jdaneflips, or our YouTube channel, Project RE, for more free real estate education.